Let's check up a bit with a game that isn't really a game. It's a freaking movie! Let's talk about Phoenix Games. It's a publisher from Europe where they publish bargain bin games. Most of the time are games that aren't actually games. They're animated movies by Dingo Pixar that are so bad it makes Video Brinquedo look like Pixar. By the way, VB is an animation studio in Brazil that rips off movies from Pixar and DreamWorks. Speaking of which, some of these movies are ripoffs of well-known Disney movies and the covers of it were trying to fool customers from thinking it's an actual Disney movie game. Here's a few of their movies. Mighty Mullen, which I own for some reason, Dalmatian 3, which doesn't feature the lay on the cover in the movie, Admiral Socket Kingdom, which is a popular movie to make fun of, and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, sorry, I meant Snow White and the Seven Clever Boys. Just trying to hide the fact that they're ripping out this is out of Snow White movie, eh? Phoenix also published actual games like Street Warrior, what's with the man in the cover? White Van Racer, the movie is like something out of that game name generator which Face Punch uses it to make fake game covers with Photoshop. And Combat Ace. Oh, they're not even trying anymore. They're clearly ripping off Ace Combat. Namco should have sued their asses, but Phoenix went out of business, fortunately. But today I'm just going to reveal one of Dingo's shit cartoons The Toys Room. Or, as the PS1 cover says, Toys. Sound generic. Guess what they're ripping off here? Guess. Just guess what Disney movie they ripped off. It's Toy Story. It's incredibly obvious that it's a Toy Story ripoff. Even if it was not trying to rip off Toy Story, it's still a ripoff of Pixar's first feature length CGI movie. End of story. Let's start the damn movie and see the atrocity it will bring. What you're seeing now is not recorded on my PS1 or my PS2. I got it off of YouTube because I don't have a capture device. But even if I have it, why bother recording it? It's on YouTube so you can watch it without buying it and regret it. We start off with a bunch of talking toys, including a talking skateboard, a talking Game Boy with a joystick on the center. Weird. And what is that? A talking pillow? How is this a toy? And skateboards aren't toys. The toys are worried because the animation here is shit. I mean, they still have two hours left before some kid living in the house leaves the kindergarten. Wait, if the kid is learning in kindergarten, what's the point of giving him a skateboard and a Game Boy? Skateboards are dangerous for the little kids, and Game Boys are also bad for the little kids because their eyes aren't completely ready. Or maybe there's another kid in the house living in, so I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Today is that kid's birthday, like in Toy Story. Except instead of starting off with a shot of a kid having fun with the toys, it starts off with a shot of the toys talking. They're being real original here. Let's talk about the animation. It's freaking terrible! Most of the time they don't move and just talk and talk and the lip sync is out of place. Oh come on, you're all acting as if it was the end of the world. It's only the little boy's birthday, said Jumping Jack. And even if they move, they're so bad it makes Epic Kitty's SFM pony animations look like Harry 101 made them. Then there's the voice acting. I should have been in time. Maybe the boy will get something quite different. New shoes or new trousers or something practical. Apparently, there's only one voice actor voicing everyone. Hell, there's a narrator narrating everything. The little boy didn't come near the nursery. He immediately ran into the living room where the birthday table was laid, and his parents were waiting for him. I get that this is for kids and stuff, but this is a movie, not an audio track. So back on track, the toys are worried about the kid getting a new toy, and as a result, you keep playing with a new toy more than the other toys. It's like in Toy Story, where the toys are worried about the kid getting a new toy, and as a result, you'll keep playing with the new toy more than the other toys. Except this has more action than this piece of shit. The doorbell rang penetrating me. What? They've been past two hours. It would have been okay if there's a car after the talking scene saying, Two hours later. But apparently, this movie's time is like GTA. When the doorbell rang, instead of acting inanimate, they sneak in to the door. That big package over there, the one with the bow. Looks very much like a toy. Um, which one? The shot literally has both presents with the bows, so you could at least say what color it is. Also, it could be two toys since, well, there's two big presents. Or maybe there's gonna be a twist where the only toy he's getting is in the small one. That could be funny. But the unseen kid opened the red one to reveal. <coughs> it's a baby doll! It's already active! So the toys didn't like the baby doll that keeps crying. But how come the toys and his parents didn't hear the toys talking? Then they go back to the room and start cheering up for the new baby doll coming to the room. I'm Pepper, which of you is Pino? 
Oh, she shrieked in that horrible baby voice. It's you! <laughs> Your days as favorite toys are done. The little boy is only going to worry about me from now on. We didn't bother to get a female voice actor because it takes too much work for it. You can also speak in a German accent for some reason. So after he destroys the tower, the toys are sick and tired of the baby and warn him to stop doing stupid shit. I'm a baby and babies are allowed to do anything. I call bullshit on that. Man, this baby cry makes me nuts. They didn't bother to record another one instead of reusing it. It feels like a stuck sound effect. Nah, what did I tell you? That's the kid? He looks more like a teenager than a freaking kid learning out of kindergarten. After that screeching baby nonsense, the toys are sad because the kid is sleeping with the baby doll. And apparently the animators didn't bother to darken their dramas to make it look like it's night. They took away the suspension of disbelief. I have an idea, called Charlie Chip. Let's look at my game instructions on how to defeat an enemy. We don't need any game instructions for that, exclaimed the building blocks. We'll throw ourselves at its head, all of us at once. And if that doesn't work, I'll ride over it, added skateboard. I could cut it open with my jumping spring grin jumping to happily. Whoa, 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 give it four plus, people. They don't take violence very well. But the talking pillow has the same opinion as me, and he advises them to wait till morning so they could talk to him. Everyone sleeps, except for that purple doll, which I don't bother calling him by his name, so I'll just call him Pinhead. So Pinhead is sad because he thought the kid doesn't like him anymore, so he leaves the house. Jeez, so far there's no humor here, and yet we get an emotional scene. After he enters the city, POLICAI! We must capture this living toy before it gets more dangerous! After he stepped over a banana peel and fell, LIVING! Trash! Cans! Is this Toy Story or Robots? The street light leaned forward curiously to see what was happening. Living! Light! Post! Next time they're gonna show a living car or something. So, the trash cans make fun of Pinhead for no reason, and he runs away until he got tired. Happily. And reaches the junkyard. Then he thought Skip in the house was a bad idea, and sleeps. The next day... <coughs> Can't you at least shut up in the early morning, said Rolla emphatically. You still haven't caught on. Babies are allowed to cry whenever they want to. I call bullshit <laughs> on that. You're not crying, you're screaming, Mon Pronto. You've even woken me, and I'm relatively hard of hearing. You've got a lot to learn, Pamper. You belong to us now, whether we like it or not. We have to be considerate of one another. I don't have to be considerate to anyone. If I complain about you, the little boy, he'll throw you all out. Spoiled brat. The toys notice that Pinhead is missing, so they try finding him, but he's gone. Oh, oh, I think he's run away. A good thing, too. He disturbed me all night long with his crime. That's a joke coming from you, said Pronto. He's only thinly dressed. He'll catch cold, and apart from that, he doesn't know anyone out there, added a troubled cut. Isn't he a toy or something? Or is this like Toontown from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where everyone is living like humans? The toys are hired with the baby doll, so they go out and find Pinhead, except the talking pillow so that he gets contact with the other toys. The doll cries, but who cares, he's annoying. So they went into the city and asked the trash cans to know where they went. The trash cans laugh because they're trying to find him. Once they start, it's hard to stop them, grinned the rat who had been observing everything. Shit, there's also talking animals! The rat tells them they don't know where he went, so they go at random places. We didn't bother to animate other cars to simulate traffic, because it's also hard to do. Also, how come nobody called the police that there is a self-aware skateboard rolling around with some toys over it? Pinhead wakes up and tells about some dream he had last night about being in a junkyard. Except he is in the junkyard! Then there's some toy you found in Pinhead and tells him what happened. It was your owner's birthday and you've been thrown away. And you don't know where to go. It's always the same. Pino nodded. Doesn't look like he's nodding. Did the animation budgets just run out? Then he tells him to follow him to his house. But Pinhead is still sad. Cut to the other toys, they still have no idea where Pinhead went. The Game Boy XP had enough of it, but the telephone calls the talking pillow if Pinhead returned home. Pinhead isn't home, so they start returning home, even though they didn't explore the whole city. But then some rat tells them that Pinhead's baggage, or bundle, was in one of those trash cans from early. The toys stared in surprise. 
Having a telephone with you and not hearing anything, wondered the rat. <laughs> well, I'm a little hard of hearing, said Pronto. The rat is right. I can hear him, Pino. Pino! Oh, come on. It could be someone else's cry. Hell, that cry could be from anyone's. It's a freaking stuck sound effect. Apart from that, they found Pinhead, and the telephone asks them what are they going to do with the baby doll. I'll punch him in the mouth if he screams again or annoys Pino, promised Jumping Jack. Because violence is the answer, I guess. So after a farewell from the junkyard toy and calling the talking pillow once more, they return home. So after that long ass scene with traveling that doesn't add up other than to make it past the 30 minute mark, they return home, Pino does something to the talking pillow and he tells the baby doll that the kid will get another toy in his birthday next year. The end. Well, that was a shit movie. I mean, yeah, it's made it on a small budget, but they could do it better than that. The animation was horrendous, the voice acting was dull, and the movie in general was terribly boring. And this was on the PlayStation, an electronic thing that plays games. It would have been nice if it was on DVD, or VHS, or at least a PC thing, but there are some video game elements here and there. There's the jigsaw game, the painting game, which you just used the fill tool to fill the spots, and the puzzle game, which was a pain in the ass to be honest. And this was a standard to all dingo games. Fortunately, these dingo games are were only released in Europe. I don't know what happened to dingo pictures, but frankly, I don't give a shit. So I'll give the toys room a Sirocco R5. Now, go have fun with Doomsday Machine, okay?